Russian President Vladimir Putin has also commented on the situation in Karabakh, saying Russia's peacekeeping mission is working closely with all sides trying to de-escalate tensions and save civilians. I will inform you about the sphere of the Azerbaijani Karabakh and Azerbaijani Armenian settlement. Our peacekeepers are working very actively with all parties involved in the conflict, doing everything to protect the peaceful population. More than 2,000 civilians have already been accommodated at our main base, more than half of them children. We are in very close contact with all parties to the conflict, with the authorities in Yerevan, Stepanakert and Baku. I hope that we will be able to achieve the escalation and a peaceful resolution of this problem. Nagorno Karabakh or Artsakh has for decades been disputed between Armenia and Azerbaijan. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the area, mainly inhabited by ethnic Armenians, proclaimed its independence. Yet the move was branded illegal by Baku. The biggest escalation happened in 2020 when the Azerbaijani army gained control over a large part of the territories Baku lost during a war in the early 1990s. Early this year, Armenia's Prime Minister admitted that he could see Karabakh back as officially part of Azerbaijan, adding his country has always respected Azerbaijan's territorial integrity. You see, these 86,000 square meters include Nagorno-Karabakh, but it should be mentioned our position is that the question of rights and security of Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh must be discussed between Baku and Stepanakert. Mr. Pashinan, tell us straight, does the current Armenian government recognize Artsakh as part of Azerbaijan? The current Armenian government position is all Armenian government recognizes Azerbaijan's territorial integrity. We are talking about you. As I have said, I have clarified, I find it difficult to give a more specific answer. However, some of the Armenian Prime Minister's remarks have targeted Russia for its actions in the region while it was tasked with being a guarantor of peace following the 2020 escalation. Yerevan blamed Moscow for not doing enough to maintain stability in the territories. The Kremlin has stressed it cannot engage in a foreign country's jurisdiction even despite its peacekeeping role. We do not accept reproaches against us, especially after the official decision of the Armenian side to recognize Karabakh as part of Azerbaijan. The Euro, we are now talking about Azerbaijan's actions on its territory. Despite the accusations, we continue to work with the Armenian side. We are waiting agreement on the timing of the telephone conversation between President Putin and Prime Minister Pashinyan. Contacts with Azerbaijan continue at the working level. If necessary, a conversation with the President of Azerbaijan can also take place. Well, for more details on the story, we can cross live to Kavog Almasi, a Middle East expert and founder of the independent political commentary channel Syriana Analysis. Many thanks for joining us on the program. It's very good to see you today. So, big developments uh, today with the Nagorno Karabakh situation. Do you think the settlement agreement means that a decades long controversy is finally over? Actually, I'm an ethnic Armenian, and I think today is a sad day for the Armenians. And I do believe that uh, despite the cessation of hostilities, this is not going to be the end of the uh, conflict between the Armenians and the Azeris until the settlement of the situation and the conditions of the Armenians who live uh, uh, in the region of uh, Karabakh. There are over 120,000 Armenians, and we have to see how uh, the important players in this region are going to guarantee the safety of the people who are going to supposedly live under the jurisdiction of Baku. Let's be uh, very honest about this. Uh, the uh, animosity between the Armenians and the Azeris are very high. And I rule out the possibility that the Armenians can be uh, living in peace and harmony with the Azeris under an Azeri jurisdiction, were it not for an international community or international powers to come and impose uh, this uh, safety on uh, uh, this jurisdiction on the Azeris. But let's be also very honest about the situation in Armenia. In politics, one should not only be careful in picking uh, its enemies, but also friends. And in the past five years, the uh, Pashinyan government has antagonized not only uh, Russia, but also Iran in the region. The goal of Pashinyan government from the beginning was to give up Nagorno-Karabakh to Azerbaijan, to alienate Iran and Russia from the region, and to uh, kick out the Russian presence uh, from the region. So, uh, 
accordingly, we see the consequences of this uh, foreign policy approach of shifting the strategic relations of uh, Yerevan toward the West. I'm not against having good relationship with the West, of course, but when you live in the Southern Caucasus and you are sandwiched between two hostile countries, such as Turkey and uh, Azerbaijan, you have to prioritize uh, your foreign policy approach. And to do that, uh, you need to have good relationship with uh, Moscow and you need to have good relationship with uh, Tehran. In contrast, what Azerbaijan did in the past uh, decade, they have increased their uh, friendly relationship with all the parties in the region and they have gained the trust of the uh, different parties in the, in the East and the West, an approach that uh, the Pashinyan government didn't pursue. And we can see the result on the ground, which is now Pashinyan says that he wants for the Russian forces to guarantee the safety of the Armenians there. Those are his people. The first mm. person who should take care of uh, the Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh is Pashinyan himself. He is the Armenian leader, not uh, uh, Russia, him, uh, Russia itself. But the policy of Pashinyan is blame Russia for all the miscalculations that he has done in the past uh, uh, four to five years, and especially after the defeat in the second Artsakh war in uh, 2022, and not learning from the mistakes. For example, yeah. after the 2022 war, he should have pursued uh, better military relations with Iran, with India and purchasing weaponry from them, but instead he has uh, pursued uh, his uh, better relationship, let's say, with, with the West, and the West will not provide mm -hmm. uh, Armenia with weaponry. He, he didn't allow the CSTO to do their military drills in Armenia, but he's allowing the Americans to come in, in, in Armenia and do their military drills. This is just suicidal policies, mm. in my opinion. Uh, yeah, speaking of the Armenian Prime Minister, what's interesting, I find, is that he claims that Yerevan hadn't taken part in the peace talks today, the settlement talks. Do you think that's accurate? How could this agreement have been reached without Yerevan's consent? Uh, for the past uh, 10 years to 20 years, every Armenian government was involved in the negotiations uh, uh, between Azerbaijan and Armenia through the mediation of Russia or uh, the Western uh, powers here. This government abandoned the Armenians of Karabakh. This, uh, this government doesn't want for the Armenians of Karabakh to be uh, to come to and live in Armenia because the Armenians of Karabakh, the 120,000, are faced now with two options. One, to stay and live in uh, in their homes uh, under the Azeri jurisdiction. And in my opinion, they will be assimilated and absorbed and in a decade or two or three, they will disappear uh, in, in the Azeri society. Or two, they will move and displace from their homes and from their territories to Armenia. But does Pashinyan want them to come to Armenia? No, because the, the, this 120,000 people, they know that uh, Pashinyan abandoned them. And if they come to Armenia, they will. this will be a trigger for a revolution again. Against him. And this is what he's warning. In the past two days, he wasn't concerned. Uh, they should only blame themselves instead of blaming uh, regional powers and international powers. You have to, it, it's, it, the government must take responsibility and defend its mm. own people and not expect Moscow or Tehran or any other power to come for and help. Yeah, and we've, we've seen the response from the people as well, haven't we? And we're anticipating more pot potentially more protests, uh, calling for his resignation later today. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, Kavul Kalmasi, and founder of independent political commentary channel Syriana Analysis and Middle East Expert. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.